Hello everyone, this Easter I once again had the opportunity of interning at Blue Robotics and during this time I continued working on the deep sea drop cam which I built over the summer. In this video I'd just like to detail a few of the improvements that have been made to the drop cam in this time and also to show some cool footage which we acquired on one of the dives. If you haven't yet seen my first video about the drop cam, I would definitely recommend watching that first as this one will make a lot more sense then. Anyway, let's get into some of the improvements that have been made. The first thing I changed was the design of the lighting fixture. As you may remember from the previous video, I had four lights set at 90 degree angles to each other, uh, but this time I tried it with three lights which worked quite well since they have a very wide field of view. This did however pose some problems later on because I did not actually fully optimize the 3D printed light hoods that I made last time for this design. Next up, I tackled the two biggest limitations that the previous version of the drop cam had. The control of the camera and the camera overheating. In order to solve the overheating, I did the two following things. First of all, I removed the internal camera battery and powered the camera using the main LiPo of the drop cam. This allowed me to place a fan inside of the previous uh, battery housing within the camera and this really helped with heat dissipation and from my testing I found that the camera could run for many many hours uh, without any sort of issues whereas previously it was limited to around 30 to 40 minutes before overheating. Next up the camera control. The Gear 360 doesn't natively support any sort of DIY remotes so what I had to do was actually solder wires to each of the individual buttons on the camera. This then allowed me to connect the wires to an Arduino which would in turn simulate button presses. Although of course this is not an optimal solution and takes a very very long time to actually complete, uh, it did work perfectly for our purposes. This indirect camera control now allowed me to turn the camera on and start recording without needing to open up the housing which was extremely helpful as of course you don't want to be opening up sensitive electronics uh, out at sea. After making these functional improvements, I then turned my attention towards the flotation and location uh, aspects of the drop cam. Previously, I used two pieces of syntactic foam glued together, but this uh, solution actually provided quite a lot of drag on the descent. So what I did was I just doubled it up and used four pieces of foam, which was a lot more aerodynamic. This of course benefits the drop cam by reducing lateral drift since it's descending and descending at a much greater rate. And as a temporary solution for finding the drop cam once it comes back, I added a yellow flag. After making these improvements, as well as many other internal changes, it was finally time for testing. First of all, we used the crushinator, the pressure chamber at Blue Robotics, in order to test that we could in fact go to the depths that we thought we could. And on the next day, after successfully completing this test, we headed out on a boat trip. And so, we released the drop cam at a depth of 540 meters. Of course, this video is heavily sped up as the descent took over 10 minutes to complete. As we descend past 200 meters, the lighting issue, which I mentioned previously, is becoming more and more obvious. As you can see, there are slight blind spots in the lighting coverage uh, due to the unoptimized uh, lighting hoods. Finally, the drop cam settles on the bottom of the ocean at around 540 meters. As you can see, this creates a large cloud of dust as the bricks, which we used as weights, impact the uh, very fine sand. Before the dust even clears, some pretty cool creatures start to come out.
The first interesting creature that we see is what I assume to be some sort of cat shark. I'm no shark expert, so if you'd like to share your insight in the comments below, please feel free to do so. At this point, something quite strange happens. Keep your eyes focused on the area right behind the assumed cat shark. As you can see, there's some sort of fish that is rocketing out of the sand, leaving a zigzag trail behind it. Once again, we see another fish that rockets out of the sand, uh, like the previous one, except this time in more uh, of a linear fashion. And now we see our first glimpse of the squid, which will return later on. Here we get a nice view of a large jellyfish, but just over here take a look at those uh, branches. As you can see there's a very small jellyfish which actually seems to be moving very very quickly, and once again it repeats this sort of motion. At this point, focus your attention on the crab that is near the branches. If you look closely at the middle of the frame on the right hand side, you'll be able to see some sort of sea snake. And here, once again, the squid, which we previously saw, uh, starts returning. This time, it's got its tentacles uh, somewhat curled up for some reason. At this point we can observe some sort of long fish swimming past, uh, although I have no idea what it's called. Due to an issue that I'm still investigating, the drop cam did not actually release the weights at the time it was supposed to, uh, so as you can see from the video, the battery is starting to run out. Thankfully, I did put a galvanic release, which is essentially a corrodible piece of metal, uh, between the weights and the drop cam, so after a few hours, uh, well after the battery ran out, the piece of metal corroded away and released the drop cam, allowing it to float back to the surface. Unfortunately, we had to leave the area before this happened, so we assumed the drop cam would be gone forever. To our surprise, a few days later, however, we heard from the Dana Wharf Sport Fishing and Whale Watching Company telling us that they actually found it. The fact that they managed to find it, and in such a short time, is extremely lucky. Uh, so we'd like to just say a massive thank you to them, because of course, without them, this video would not have been possible.